What's up everybody? I just got done somehow killing a horde of zombies in this MACU building with a plastic knife after I got out of the theater from watching Hotel Transylvania 2. It was a long walk, a long crawl, but you know what? Screw the guns, screw the crossbow, a plastic knife. That's how you take out zombies. This is my review for Hotel Transylvania 2. <laughs> Okay, I hope you all are enjoying Cinetober. I certainly am. Uh, like I said, this is my review for Hotel Transylvania 2. Now, if you have not seen this movie, or if you do not know what it's about, if you have watched the first one or not, uh, and if like a, if you pretty much do not want spoilers, I strongly suggest you leave this video. I will give you a couple seconds to leave. If you guys uh, went and watched the movie, I hope you enjoyed it. Let's go ahead and talk about this movie. So, this is the continuing story from the first Hotel Transylvania where Dracula and his daughter, Dracula's daughter gets married to a human. And basically, uh, in this movie, it is now Dracula has accepted humans into his hotel. And Dracula's daughter and her husband are getting, are, uh, it show, the movie shows the wedding. Uh, and it shows like how everyone's coping with it and how... Uh, they still live in the hotel because I guess it's where um, she grew up and so she never left and also the husband doesn't want to leave either and like throughout the whole entire movie he's like I don't want to leave I don't want to leave I want to stay here but they find out that they have a baby named Dennis and which is Dracula who is voiced by Adam Sandler and I'm just going to say this is a huge step up from his from the last movie that I watched him in, which was Pixels. Pixels, he just didn't look like he cared. But when I sat down, when I watched this movie with uh, with my friend, we were just sitting there watching. And just from Adam Sandler's voice acting and from the emotion I felt from the character of Dracula, it really felt like he cared, like he enjoyed playing this character. And so I was like, okay, I have respect for Adam Sandler again. But... So it's pretty much about like how they find out that um, his daughter is pregnant, that he's excited. He's like, I'm going to be a grand, uh, a vampire, a grand, uh, a grandpa vampire. Vampire. No, that's not what they say. Um, a, va a vampire. And uh, so like he's so excited because he wants to teach the kid everything that he's learned. He wants to teach him how to be a vampire. But the problem is he doesn't look like a vampire. And through the whole entire movie, Dracula is trying to get his daughter to stay because he does not want her to leave. And he's like, okay, if I can just somehow find a way to show everyone that this child is a vampire, I won't lose my daughter. And it's like, he's doing everything he can to try to get his, try to get the family to stay. But the daughter feels like because he's not a monster, he deserves a normal life. And... That's what she wants. And when things even start kind of getting a little dangerous around the house, she decides, okay, well, we're just, we might just need to move to California. So while that's going on, Dracula's like, here, you and your husband go back to California, see if it's an improvable, uh, uh, in a good environment for, for Dennis. We will watch him for a week. And this movie has some honest, great laughs. It has great jokes. It has good heart, well, heart filming, heart, heartwhelming moments it has some good it has great cuteness it this movie has a lot of good things going for it. it was surprisingly good i have heard that hotel transylvania one is good um uh now the reason that i went and watched hotel transylvania 2 was because we arrived late for the movie that we were wanting to see and because i don't like walking in on movies late i was like well, let's just watch hotel transylvania 2 and i was like okay this is so funny i have got to get this when it comes out on blu-ray but so like throughout the whole entire thing, Dracula and his friends, who are now older, uh, I mean, they were old in the first one, but they're more older, and they're trying to show this kid, like, everything that they are. Basically, Dracula is trying to show this kid everything he did when he was younger, and it's all changed. And, like, they do a bunch of great gags. They just do such a great job of this movie. I laughed so many times. There was not a scene in the movie where I was like, I, I don't like this movie. There was not a single scene. 
The only character that I did not like in the movie was probably the husband's mom, but because she kept saying, she was one of those characters like, now Dennis can live with normal people. I was like, I hope you die or something. I, I was like, I hope something really bad happens to you. Um, But it's just, it's just so cute with all the stuff that this kid does. His relationship with um, with his grandpa is hilarious. It is adorable. Adam Sandler plays really well from the kid. It's just so great. I, I had such a fun time in this movie. Um, we get some really good uh, voice acting, not just from Adam Sandler, but from David Spade and the guy who played, who has played in other movies alongside Adam Sandler. I do not know his name, but he played the guy in Grown Ups who gets his uh, body put in a full cast when he's stuck like this. He played the, the werewolf, and they show how old they are because, like, when Dracula is trying to show this kid all this cool stuff about being a monster, uh, he's like, um, go kill us something. All right, now how did it go? Oh, no, 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 that's when I'm howling at the moon. And so he's trying to show what he used to do, but because he's old, if you throw a Frisbee, the werewolf acts like a dog, and he starts digging and everything, and it's just so funny. But this movie actually does have a good lesson, and it is about accepting that there is going to be... The lesson that, I, that it came across to me was the fact that there is going to be change. And even though you do not like it, it's going to happen no matter what, but change is good. And they, you know, they don't play it off like, you know, change is a horrible thing. They play it, they play it with change is going to happen. You know, you're not going to stay a kid forever. Things are eventually going to be different. And it takes Adam Sandler's character a long time in the movie to realize that that change is going to happen, but he grows, Dracula as a character himself, grows throughout this movie because he lets humans into the motel. And like, actually in this movie, humans know about monsters. Like they're popular. Like there's people who are dating monsters. Monsters and humans are dating. And we get some really good gags about seeing Dracula or Frankenstein and uh, Dracula tries to scare somebody or something's like, hey, can we have your autograph? We love your cereal. And I was like, oh, this is so funny. <laughs> but this movie I had no problems with at all, except that one character. Um, Hotel Transylvania 2 was a good time at the movies. It was a fun, enjoyable movie. I would go watch this movie again in theaters if I could. Uh, I'm going to give Hotel Transylvania an A+. Hotel Transylvania 2 is a good kids and even adult movie. Um, like I said, it's got great voice acting. It's got a good story. It has good morals. And it even also has something like standing up to people that you're kind of afraid of. Um, uh, we get actually Dracula's dad, Vlad the Impaler. And they do talk earlier on in the film about how Vlad, uh, if Vlad found out that his daughter, that um, Dracula's daughter married a human, Dracula would pretty much be disowned or disowned or something like that, or he would flip out and he would go on a rampage. And actually, even Vlad the Impaler himself in this movie grows as a character as well, because when the big climax happens, um, Vlad the Impaler stands up and he's like, never come towards me or my family again. I cannot do a good Dracula impersonation, but I'm pretty sure that the actor who was doing uh, Vlad the Impaler's voice was Mel uh, was Mel Brooks, because um, he sounded like him. And I, I could just I could pinpoint the voice, but they talk about like, how Vlad is intimidating, and like like they talk about like, how even though um, Dennis doesn't have his fangs yet, well they talked about well I mean you know he's a he's a late fanger, so like one of the most intense moments is when Vlad shows up. And he's looking at this boy's mouth, and he's like, he's a late fanger. He was. And I was like, oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Because I was like, oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. He's going to snap. Oh, oh, thank goodness. <laughs> but, guys, like I said, this movie gets an A+. Plus. Um, I cannot wait to see. If they do a third movie, which I don't know if they could, but if they do, I hope that they really try to do something different because this movie was a blast to sit through. It was something I would gladly go see again, and I hope that you all enjoy it too. Guys, 
This has been another episode of Cinetober. Put in the comments below, what have you, what did you think of Hotel Transylvania 2? What was your best parts? What was your least parts? Who was your favorite monster? What was your favorite hilarious scene? Um, I really want to know. And for those who are enjoying Cinetober, I hope you are. And if you have comments about how I can make my videos better, put in the comments below. Hit that like button. Share this video with your mom, your dad, your granddad, your grandma, your cat, your dog, your enemies, people you love, people you hate, other people that you hate that they hate. Show that you're better than them or something. Show how they're better than their enemies. I don't know. Like this video. Guys, have a good night.